some health systems and health system leaders are calling for changes to the state rules around practicing across state lines. This specifically impacts telehealth. Prior to the, what are we calling them? The whatever, the relaxation of the rules mm -hmm. that were instituted, a physician would have to get certified in multiple states to practice telehealth across those state lines. Well, some are saying, hey, look, let's just, these allowances that have been made, let's just make them permanent. Let's, if somebody's certified in South Carolina, they should be able to practice in North Carolina, they should be able to practice in Florida, and we'll be able to do telehealth across those state lines. You know, what, you know, what's your view of that? What, how do you, how do you view that suggestion? I think there is absolutely value to relaxing those restrictions. I think looking at it, again, I'm a pragmatist, looking at it from a practical standpoint, the stakeholders that were opposed to relaxing those regulations prior to the pandemic, I, I'm not sure that they are going to completely change their tune now, but I think that there's absolutely value to trying to continue to push that forward. I think the thing we need to also keep in mind though is there are there is downside and there is risk that goes beyond just state medical boards lose their power. I think there is risk because the people, the, the institutions that are really focused on relaxing state li licensure requirements are big box telehealth providers, large institutions that are looking to expand their reach across multiple states. And such those sorts of relaxed regulations advantages those institutions. And it really can disadvantage the community provider the primary care pediatrician, to take it straight to the folks that I know, that don't have the resources or even the, they don't necessarily want to have a, a three-state footprint. They want to provide care to their patients and their communities. And I think there is certainly a way to do this that could facilitate that and lower those barriers to allow, what I would love to see is, is a relaxation of regulations so that providers can follow their established patients across state lines when they go to college, when they go on vacation, when they go somewhere for work, right? If you have a, a CF patient that you've been following for years and they go to college out of state, you should continue to be able to see that patient. If you are following a complex, uh, a patient with a chronic disease, or you have a care team, a coordinated care team that's really helping to manage a patient that has a lot of medical issues and they should be able to go on vacation in a different state and still be connected with their care team. And I think if we look at it from that standpoint, then we can institute some really smart policies and regulations that will protect that medical home and protect that relationship with your providers and still facilitate the expansion of quality telehealth services. I'm going to steal a whole bunch of that. I've been trying to say what you just said right there on the Newsday show over the last uh, six months or so, in that this is a highly nuanced thing. Yeah. It's not just a oh, state's rights versus you know the federal sort of coming in and, and whatever. There is a competition aspect of it. It does mm -hmm. It does favor the funded institutions, the large academic medical centers, the, uh, the national telehealth players. It favors them.